Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Unfiltered. Pastor David, welcome home. Well, thank you, John. <clears throat> you know, uh, earlier we had the opportunity to go to a luncheon and you did a like a little panel. And I wanted to ask, you recently just returned from a trip from San Jose, and it was a Q&A type of thing from the Jesus movement, correct? Yeah. So they had some worship and and uh, even in our in our Q and A panel this afternoon, uh, some of the questions arose about the Jesus movement. And it seems since Asbury, since all these revivals have broken up or broken out and have come and gone, the Jesus movement nostalgia has been going on. That's true. And uh, and I wanted to ask you because a question that came up in the Q and A earlier that you were a part of was how can we rekindle the Jesus movement, or what do we need to do to bring the Jesus movement back? And I really loved your answer, and I would like to see if you can answer that, but also give some insight to how does that happen? Trying to get that relived or restarted, because it's something we can't ever redo, And uh, but I wanted to get your take on that. You know, I think that sometimes people have a tens tendency towards nostalgic thinking, this nostalgic way of thinking. They it's kind of like, for example, the modern hippies, the young people who are dressing up, trying to appear like hippies, maybe having tie-dye or letting their hair grow or putting on beads and, and uh, you know, bells on their, on, their, uh, on their jeans, you know, and all of that, which was kind of the, it was the, the dress of, uh, of some who were part of what was called the hippie movement and all. And so they try and, they try and have the appearance that they um, would have been part of such a movement and all. And, and the fact is, is like I was sharing today with, with uh, the pastors, um, you know, that was a spontaneous thing. That was a cultural thing at the moment. So it was genuine because that's what was being produced at that time, right? So when you try and look at something and say, I like the way that looks, I would like to have that, and then you try and produce it, or quote unquote reproduce it, uh, it, it doesn't work because it has to be a spontaneous movement uh, in, in the Jesus movement. It has to be a spontaneous movement of the Holy Spirit for that moment. And, and it doesn't mean that the Lord is going to duplicate in exactly what happened you know, 50 plus years ago. He's going to do something new. One of the things that I love about uh, the Lord is he says, behold, I make all things new. Mm -hmm. And he, he doesn't necessarily engender for me to have a spirit of nostalgia. I do look back, obviously, and I do say, look at how he moved. And Father, please, move that way again. But we can't artificially produce something that is spirit. You know, my pastor Chuck Smith used to say, have we begun in the spirit and shall we be made complete? by the flesh. In other words, you know, we have to be careful not to try and produce something that only God himself can produce. And so we were talking about that today and talking about the movement and how sometimes people would like to see that. And, and I was pointing out, you know, that we have a tendency of looking at certain points of time and say God moved in a certain way by, but, but forget that he's moving still. He hasn't stopped moving. Maybe there aren't cameras on people. Maybe they're not seeing thousands every week being baptized in, in, in a cove like, like occurred, you know, under the ministry of uh, the Spirit through Chuck Smith. <laughs> but he is moving. But he is still being, uh, he's still in operation. And I mentioned to the fellows, I said, you know, every week you give an invitation People are getting saved. I mean, it's not that the Spirit stopped moving. So we have to be careful not to try and recreate something that was spiritually spontaneous. People see things like the quote-unquote Asbury revival that, you know, within the last few months people were publishing. And then what happened to this Asbury revival? What, what occurred? Well, because it was disrupting studies at a, <laughs> at a Christian school, they moved it off campus. And the way I look at that, to be honest with you, is uh, you're saying to the Holy Spirit, you're really not welcome here. I mean, if the Spirit is moving, we're saying you're really not welcome here because these people have to finish the studies that we're giving them concerning who you are. 
So can you please go somewhere else so we can tell them who you are so they can then go and experience you? It, it made no sense. And so you cannot create something that spontaneously occurs through the power of the Spirit. And so, you know, in closing, just a couple of thoughts. Uh, I was sharing with the fellows, we need the Word of God and we need the power of God. Amen. That's what we need. And every pastor who's worth his salt ought to be proclaiming that through the Word. Amen. Pastor David, thank you so much. I want to invite you guys to come out and join us tomorrow evening, which is Wednesday, our 7 p.m. service. You're taking us through Romans, and we're also going to be celebrating communion as a church family. Great opportunity to invite your friends and family to come out and join us. We look forward to seeing you again uh, this week and next week. God bless you, and Pastor, thank you again. Thank you guys for tuning in. God bless you.